Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. For this cake, I am so excited to show you this technique. I have been watching this on social media, um, on other pages, and I've been trying to figure out how to do this. And finally, somebody figured it out. Anna, I'm gonna murder this. Anna Ashtashkina. <laughs> She has a YouTube channel as well, and she figured this out. So all credit goes to her and Ecats Academy. Ecats Academy is the original one that I saw, but Anna came up with this technique on her own also. So I'm excited to show this to you, and let's get started. So we're going to start with wafer paper and water. This is how we make this edible crinoline. So I'm taking a sheet and a half of zero grade wafer paper and I'm tearing it into little pieces and putting it into my little um, ninja. You can use a food processor, um, whatever tool you have that's going to basically emulsify this. And then add your water. I will put the recipe in the description box so that you have that. And I go ahead and I put the top on and I just make it spin, 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 spin. And you just, you really, you want it to Get to the point where the paper has completely dissolved into the water. And these are the only two ingredients in this. I swear to goodness. That's it. You're kind of making a slurry out of it. And then I'm going to use um, my pastry brush, my silicone pastry brush. And I put two tablespoons of this in a preheated non-stick pan. I have it on medium high when I first put it on. And I kind of disperse it with that silicone pa pastry brush and then I turn it down to medium low and what I'm doing is the air bubbles the bubbles that are created by dehydrating and when the heat with the heat interacts with it is what gives it that airy meshy look and it will just dehydrate as well all you're doing is you're taking the water back out of it and as soon as you can pull it off of your nonstick pan that's when it's done. And isn't that beautiful? And you will notice that it is going to be a little bit crispy at first, but as you let it set out and come to room temperature, 10 minutes or so, it will soften up. Now I did notice that the thicker or the more, um, the more of this product you put in the pan, the thicker the sheet is, and the less pliable it is. So get it as thin as you can. And now I wanted to add some color. Now to add some color, I'm using some just some petal dust and some luster dust. Now you could use powder food coloring. Anna says don't use the color gels, that the sugar and the color gels actually make it stick to the pan. So I just used the powders that I have and I made sure that they did not have any sugar in them. And then do the same thing, just let it dehydrate. Now I did notice with the color, if you leave it on the pan too long, it's going to turn kind of yellow, this color in particular. So as soon as you can pull it off, do so. And then just set those aside until you're ready to use them. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm putting on my final layer of chocolate ganache over my crumb coated cake for the bottom tier. I wanted to do chocolate ganache. This is dark chocolate ganache, which is equal parts, uh, I'm sorry, two parts of the chocolate to one part of heavy cream melt them together slowly and then as soon as the chocolate is mixed into the the cream and smooth set it aside and let it thicken up till you get this consistency it just gives you a really firm but still but not hard finish to your cake it holds the shape of the cake better than anything I've ever found, but it's actually very soft and very feels has a good mouthfeel when you eat it. Now I'm gonna go ahead and make some rice paper sales, I'm gonna call them. And what I used there was some food grade glycerin mixed with that luster dust that I will put a link to in the description as well, and some gold luster dust and some silver luster dust. And I'm just sponging it on this rice paper. Now that glycerin is what's going to give it a little bit of flexibility when you're trying when you're going to to shape your um, your sails here. Now I didn't have any particular pattern. I wanted this to be random because it's going to be shaped anyways, so it doesn't really matter. So just go ahead and cover your entire piece of rice paper, and I did it on two of them. So I have 
extra pieces to, to work with. I always like to have more than I need. Now I will say too, I want to touch base with um, who came up with this technique. Like I said, the original person I saw was eCats Academy and I will try to attach a link for her as well. Um, she has an entire class for edible mediums and she does charge for that, which I don't blame her because if she came up with this, this is her thing, right? Um, so I've been trying to figure out how to do it on my own and I, to, it wasn't working and it turns out what I was doing was working too hard, adding too many ingredients. So Anna figured it out on her own also. You will see other people claiming to have come up with it, but, um, and I, not knowing a hundred percent, I'm just giving credit to these two creators because that's where I saw it. This is not my creation. <laughs> This cake is, but that technique is not. So once that cake had been set up in the refrigerator, refrigerator for about 20 minutes, I went ahead and I rolled out my fondant and put some shortening on the ganache before I draped the fondant over, work out all of your air bubbles, and then I like to put a little bit of a sharp edge on the top of the cake. And what I'm doing there is I'm using a balled up piece of fondant and using that to actually smooth out the cake. Sometimes I feel like that works a little bit better than your fondant smoothers. And to get the draping on this cake, I am just using the same fondant, rolling it out to about an eighth of an inch thickness, and I'm just basically pushing the pleats into it, using my fingers to do this. And then set each piece aside to set up a little bit before you actually apply it to the cake. It makes your job of transferring it over to the cake just that much easier. Transferring this fondant is just kind of a just do it kind of situation. You'll want to go ahead and spray your cake with water or brush water on, or even some simple syrup would work too, something a little stronger than the shortening that I typically use. And then you just pick up the top part of your pleated piece of fondant with one hand and with your other hand, put it underneath and just lift it up. And then it will have, you will have a little bit of time to mess with the pleats if you need to. Um, but yeah, just do it. Don't second guess yourself and just do it. I think setting it aside for a couple minutes definitely helps. And then I'm just using some more of that luster dust to add some shimmer to the pleats. That way that is one of the unifying factors in this cake is that shimmer. I've not done a lot with shimmer. Um, but I used to all the time and I, I want it to come back. <laughs> I like it. I'm like a child with keys. Ooh, pretty shiny thing. So to get, <laughs> sorry, to get um, the this tier ready for your top tier to be applied on there, I just used a six inch cake board because that's the same size diameter as my top tier. Use it as a template and cut around it into your fondant to remove those pleats. I mean, if you cut into the fondant, uh, your base layer of fondant, that's okay. It's not gonna hurt anything. You're not gonna see it, but just try not to. And then I did just kind of try to soften that edge where the pleats meet the cake. And I'm just using my boba straws as my support for the top tier. I did just three boba straws. I usually do three to five when I'm putting a six inch on top of another tier. And then I'm just using my scissors to cut off the excess, put a little buttercream, and then apply your top tier. And I'm doing a buttercream texture technique here. All I did, I wanted this to be more of a spackled type texture, so I did not thin down my buttercream this time. And I just dipped my paper towel into a bowl of buttercream and just pat it on to the chilled cake. This cake had already been covered in buttercream and it had been setting in the refrigerator waiting to be applied onto the top of the, the bottom tier. So it is nice and firm and dry to the touch so you can mess with this a little bit. And then to get those, I didn't want it to really have peaks on these pieces of texture or this textured buttercream. So I just used my spatula or yeah, my spatula to um, kind of smooth down the top edges. And then I'm just adding some sugar crystals, some clear and some silver by sticking my finger in a little bit of water and then dipping it into the crystals and then transferring it that way. And then I also added some gold, or sorry, some pearl dry jays. Just so that this top tier, I wanted it to have something special about it, but I didn't want it to conflict 
and fight with the rest of the details in the cake. So I figured texture and a little bit of um, some sugar details would do the trick. And now I'm just cutting these pieces of rice paper. I just keep saying that, wafer paper in two triangles. And then I just sprayed a little bit of Everclear on there. And then that is what's going to keep it gathered together at the bottom. And just try to make each piece just a little bit different. You end up, I honestly end up getting them all looking the same, basically. I think it's just the way my fingers work. I fold and pleat things the same way. And then to get these pieces of this edible crinoline to stick, I am just using some piping gel. And you will end up probably needing to use some toothpicks to hold this in place while it sets up. And that is fine, as long as you remember to go back and remove those toothpicks before this cake is consumed. Because once it has stuck to the cake, it's, it's fine, they're gonna stay. You don't need them to stay in. I would say leave them in for maybe a half an hour until things have set up. And just kind of place these however you want. You can't really plan this out because each one of them kind of um, folds in a different way or pleats in a different way or gathers in a different way. And I am going to keep playing. I'm going to, I have another design in mind um, that I might do this week to use the same technique. And I want to keep playing with it because I want to get it a little bit more um, pliable, a little bit more flexible. Even with sitting, I found that it was still like that bottom piece there. I, I mean, I think it looks pretty, but it wasn't what I wanted it to be. It just looks folded. <laughs> so stay tuned. I'm going to kind of keep playing with this whole technique. And there it is. And I would strongly suggest that everybody, please go check out Anna's page and eCats Academy. They have a lot of techniques and you can learn a lot from them as well. So thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch my video. And if you'd like to watch some other videos, go ahead and click on the link to one of these other videos shown here. And if you would like to check out my other social media, I am on Facebook and Instagram under the same name, Sophisticates by Mary. And please take the time to share, like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so that you know when I upload another video. Thank you so much. And we'll catch you on the next tutorial.